How's it going YouTube? It's Lucas here from DD205 channel and today I have a video on this. Which, this happens to be a, I don't know what year, Nyko Raider. Not to be confused with any other modern RC that is named Raider. This, I'm assuming is like 90s, kind of. I mean, most RCs that I have are 90s and, yeah. Um, so, th yeah. This is a two-wheel drive uh, stadium truck, as I believe. It doesn't really look like a truggy. It doesn't, it isn't one. Um, as a two-wheel drive truggy, or short, a stadium truck, as I guess I just said, um, that has in, well, independent suspension on the front. And it kind of has this weird pivot system where it's not like up and down. It pivots on one axis. Um, and fully link, or well, not link. Connected, non-independent suspension on the back. I mean, kind of, if you really wanted to. But I don't think that's its intended way of... Like, I, I don't think it can really act like an independent suspension vehicle. Um, the tires are kind of interesting. Um, they're supposed to be, pin be uh, pins, like any other buggy. And these things are really fine, and like even running it for five minutes, the, these things on asphalt would wear out really quickly. Um, but they're kind of pins. They would work on nice like soft dirt or like anything that normal buggies would work on um but i had the fortune or fortunate way of i don't know what i'm trying to say i fortunately found this at a goodwill or savers or actually i think it was a um yeah whatever it doesn't matter i found this at a thrift store either way um, and these tires were on the back of it, which I'll get into more to, more into after this, but these were super bald tires, like, I tried to go forward, and they would not turn whatsoever, they would just skid around and not work very well. So I'll probably try to find, like, replacements, or something like that, which, luckily, as I'm gonna get into now, you can... Unscrew these three things, pop off the bear, or pop off the, um, hub, or not hub, uh, thing. You can pop off this thing, take off the tires, and if you wanted to, switch out the tires. Which, for my case, actually, I had to do that. Thankfully enough, that actually could do something instead of just having it really bald. Now I actually have to find replacements for these instead of just using it because it doesn't turn very well. But, I mean, yeah. Speaking of turning not very well, it kind of clicks into one way. And that could also be the ser uh, um, servo saver. Like on most older RC buggies, they don't really work very well. Um, I guess I'll get into one thing finally. This thing does not actually come with a controller. I have seen a review on it, like, to try to figure out what the controller looks like. It doesn't have one. Um, and actually, interestingly enough, speaking of which, you can kind of take off the, bo the body with body clips. The I don't have any original body clips anymore, anyway. Um, and you can just set this nice-looking body. It actually does kind of look really neat, kind of. Just said kind of way too many, way too many times. Um, so yeah, normally there's a plate thing going over here, but I took that off for convenience and stuff of actually getting in here. Um, the servo design, actually, interestingly enough, is the same size as any normal like RC steering servo. Um, but it, it, you can't like. The way it's designed and the way that most servo savers of this time worked is it doesn't fit newer ones. Um, 
I guess, moving completely off of everything else, the shocks are just springs only. No dampening. And, um... The antenna is really long, as 27 megahertz radios are, or even 49 megahertz. They're super freaking tall, like almost up to here, compared to the buggy. That's a long distance. Um, and it's just a straight tube going out at the top of this thing, which actually goes through here. But I didn't, ha I kind of tethered mine around the thing, so I wouldn't have to worry about that in general. Um... But yeah, I yeah, have that tethered around. Um, so the circuit is kind of interesting because from the top, you can just see this little tiny hole and you can see this thing. This thing, for those who don't know, is a crystal. Um, you can take them out and swap them around with any other crystal you have that matches the radio. This one is currently set at uh, 5. Which matches up with the low C, or the miniature, whoops, I guess I still had that on. This matches up with the miniature low C, um, crystal that I actually have. That's why I took it out of the low C and put it in here, so it works. Um, so getting into that kind of, it's like Nyko's attempt at making an almost hobby grade RC, and... They did a good job with it for being that time that this thing was made. Um, and that's kind of neat because if someone else has the same frequency somehow, you can just swap this out and on the controller and you can run multiple of them, which is neat. Um, so yeah, um, I'm saying I'm um, a lot, I should really stop. And it is brushed system obviously and getting back here anyway it has a high and low gear ratio no turbo on the transmitter which it doesn't have in the first place um it yeah so it's brushed and has two speeds but you have to switch it manually uh it also has a differential which is kind of neat but not very useful if you're driving on uneven surfaces which, I guess, going into it again, flipping it over. This part, down here, how to get into the battery tray. As you flip this little thing down, pull this back, presumably. Which I can't apparently do. Either way. Um, but this flap is supposed to come up, and then you're supposed to take this out. So this actually holds eight AA batteries and a little detachable thing that you can hook up using a Tamiya connector, which I guess I have it on currently, so I should probably not. Actually, I don't know if it's on or off. Um, so yeah, that's one way, now seeing as though it's the same connector as the Tempest, I can hook it up to the temp uh, hook it up to the my LiPo and have it go super fast. But I wouldn't necessarily recommend doing that, seeing as though it's really old and it's using a circuit board that's not very well built, I guess. Um, I don't know what else to talk about. I mean, it's a kind of cool RC. Like, if you find this out in the middle of a thrift store, which I hope, uh, which I did, I also found this with the um, flamethrower buggy over there, which is kind of cool. I, it was a toss up between this and um, the flamethrower, at least I thought of, until my dad was like, why not just get both? And so he did. So that was 15 bucks for two vintage RCs. Um, and he was like thoroughly convinced I'm not getting this thing because it didn't come with a remote, which I said, screw it anyway, because if Seeing as though it uses these motors, I can just clip the wires and hook them up to a speed control. Which, actually, looking at it now, there's three wires instead of two. <sighs> Why? Uh, but yeah, then I did some further research when I got home and figured out that you can just put a new crystal in there and have it work with any other 27 megahertz radio. And, boom, done, you have an RC that works. 
Um, if, of course, you have the battery tray and, well, a Nintendo that actually is still intact. So I guess that is my overview. At least I think. <laughs> I think I covered most of it. Of the uh, Nyko Raider, but a uh, Raider. I don't know. I forgot what this thing's called. Trophy truck. No. Uh. I forget. I forget what this thing's called. The. the yeah. It'll come up to me eventually, but this is my review of the Nyko Raider. Um, like, comment, subscribe, I guess I'll see you guys in the next video. Lucas out. Bye, YouTube. Hmm. This is really weird. I still can't think of what this thing's called. Trophy truck? No. Stadium truck. There you go. There. It's called a stadium truck. I don't know why I didn't remember that. There. Yeah. Ow. It really hurts to walk. Right where you belong. Right on top of that. And that. And that. And that. And these. Magnificent. Lucas out by YouTube.